Welcome to Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle Dinas, a podcast where we spotlight service in the Longmont and surrounding communities. All right, let's connect. Welcome to today's episode of Serving Locally with me. I am here with John Lovell with the Habitat for Humanity, and I'm really excited um, about this. Um, I got to work with them a little bit with the Veterans Community Project, and then I think I got in touch with you at the Unity and Community this year. Correct. So that way we can um, actually get you on here. So um, we'll just start out with who are you, and just give us a little bit of an overview about Habitat for Humanity. Great. Well, thank you, Michelle, for inviting us. Um, my name is John Lovell. I'm the Director of Development for Habitat for Humanity of the St. Rain Valley. Uh, we're one of about 1,100 affiliates uh, in the United States of America, and we also serve in 70 countries overseas. Oh, wow. I did not know it was that big. Yep. That's it's fantastic. been an international organization since its inception. Awesome. Can you give us just a little bit of a background about Habitat for Humanity? Sure. Um, Habitat International was founded in 1976 by Millard and Linda Fuller and uh, another gentleman named Clarence Jordan. Um, together, they put together the basic principles at a place called Koinia Farms, which was an integrated farming community. And the whole idea of um, putting together, having families um, help build their own homes. Um, a lot of the concepts that we use today in Habitat for Humanity uh, are originally started at Koinia Farms. Uh, in 1976, uh, we actually became a separate entity. Um, our affiliate here in Longmont uh, was founded in 1988, and we're actually celebrating our 35th anniversary this That's year. I am. <laughs> oh, well, so there you go. Okay. Well, then then we've been around as long as you have. That's awesome. So here in Longmont, uh, we also serve uh, our our service area, if you will, mm -hmm. runs all the way from Decono Frederick Firestone uh, all the way up to uh, Estes Park. Mm. Awesome. What is your focus at Habitat for Humanity? Well, our um, thing we're best known for, of course, is our um, home building program. Mm -hmm. um, we have completed 122 homes uh, here in our service area, most of them here in Longmont. Um, we also have a very active uh, repair program when the floods came in 2013. Uh, that was really the genesis of our work there. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, completed uh, 58 repairs to date. We've got three more underway. As I said, 122 homes. We've got another two that we'll be finishing in January. And then we're starting uh, 12 new homes uh, here in January uh, on the south part of town. Oh, wow. That's a lot. 12, yes, it is. 12 at one time. Yes. Is we, it like a, a community then or are they spread out? Uh, no, in this case, uh, it is part of a larger commercial development mm. um, where we are able to uh, build paired homes with, that will be somewhat similar but not the same uh, to the commercial development that's going on right next to us. Mm. So the, we love it because the families will be integrated into that community mm. and, uh, and be part of it from the very beginning. Very good. Cool. Very good. I remember – I think we did Habitat for Humanity when I was like my kids' age because my mom was Mrs. Westminster or something when uh, I, you know, mm -hmm. 20 years ago or more than that now. Um, and uh, and I think we went and painted some lady's house and did some yard work mm -hmm. for her. You probably her did fence. what we called a brush with kindness, okay, which is that, sounds familiar. that kind of, of program, uh, probably with Metro Denver if you live down in, in uh, Westminster. Mm -hmm. There are 21 uh, different uh, habitat affiliates across the state of Colorado, and we have a state organization as well called Habitat Colorado oh, okay. that uh, works with our uh, state legislators and things like that. So uh, it's a good, close-knit family. Very good. Who are you trying to reach with your organization? 
Well, several folks that we um, that we focus on. Let's talk about families first. Mm -hmm. uh, our families are um, typically earning between 30 to 60 percent of the area median income. So they're considered very low income families. Uh, but they are uh, families that are serving as CNAs in our community. Um, they might be in the manufacturing business. Uh, they might have their own small businesses. Mm -hmm. But that equates to, let's call it um, anywhere between thirty and sixty thousand dollars in um, annual income for those families, and that varies depending on family size, things like that. So we're um, we're serving a segment that could not uh, get uh, any kind of typical financing that you would mm -hmm. see uh, in the uh, in our our state of the world today, you mm -hmm. know, so that's, um, that's a very important part of, of what we uh, do. Uh, as I say, we're about to start 12 new homes, so we'll be selecting 12 families here in the next year or so uh, that will help build their homes. So a Habitat family uh, actually has to uh, put in 250 to 500 hours of sweat equity mm. to build their homes and the homes of their neighbors. Um, oh, the whole and, and their neighbors. That's too. right. Awesome. So it isn't just their house they're mm -hmm. working on. So they're all working together. They're all working together. So they get to know one another, mm -hmm. obviously, in a, in a very important way. Um, the other part uh, that we, we really want to focus on, especially with, with your mission here, uh, is that volunteers are an absolutely integral part of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't be doing this program if we didn't have volunteers as part of it. And the benefit there for both the families and the volunteers is they get a chance to interact, to meet one to another, connect. to know who it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, that they're serving, yeah. which is a terrific uh, thing. It isn't like somebody who's distant from them. Right. Um, but they also find out amazing things about one another. Like they're on the kids' same soccer program. Mm -hmm. Their kids go to our uh, school with the, the families. So it is a an important uh, breaking down of barriers uh, for folks. And as a result of that, we find many of our volunteers also become our advocates. Mm -hmm. So – our board has been very clear in the, in the years that we've been around to say, we want to make sure our volunteer experience is as good as possible so that they become advocates and ultimately, for me, donors uh, to our program mm -hmm. as they see the benefits and the changes in our families. Absolutely. What makes the work of Habitat for Humanity different than other similar serving organizations? Um, there are very few organizations that focus on home ownership. Mm -hmm. That is our primary focus. So um, we're part of what we call a housing continuum from, er, that ranges everything from homelessness all the way up to home ownership. And they're, those are important steps uh, that we find people go through. So a um, lot of rental housing in town, a lot of affordable rental housing. That's something we also need in our communities mm -hmm. besides affordable housing. Um, so each of those steps along the way uh, are important uh, to serve for a particular time and as people gain stability moving forward to the next step uh, in the home ownership process in our view. So um, we're excited because those homes uh, – they become property taxpayers just like all of us and uh, and really have an important um, part of clearing the way for more people to become part of the Section 8 program, for homeless folks to move into stable housing themselves. That that process is very important to us as well. It helps them through to an end game. Correct. Yeah, that's Correct. awesome. And you mentioned uh, earlier that you were part of the Veterans Community Project mm -hmm. build. They're amazing. They're, it's an amazing <laughs> program. It's absolutely amazing. But again, that's serving mm -hmm. the homeless population of our veterans. Mm -hmm. Very sad thing. We're excited because the Veterans Community Project um, has, uh, for the first time in Kansas City where they were founded, they've had a person go through their program all the way to become a Habitat owner. Mm. And we're hoping for the same thing here. But we also work closely with the in-between mm -hmm. to identify families that uh, need stability. They've, they've gotten past their, their 
challenge that they're particularly facing and in turn become uh, habitat homeowners. And well, we've probably had, I want to say, eight to ten families come out of the in-between, work their way through the program and become habitat homeowners. That's awesome. Um, just, just, can you walk me through kind of what, what it means to be a habitat owner? Like, what mm-hmm. is, what is that, you know, what is that, what does that look like? Is, do, are they paying for the house? Are they, like you said, there's sweat equity. Mm-hmm. Like what else goes into that? So um, Habitat Home Ownership is not a giveaway program. Mm-hmm. It's very important for folks to understand that for your listeners. Um, Habitat um, helps build a home with the family. Mm-hmm. You know, my job is to raise funds uh, to help uh, facilitate that process. But then they become homeowners. They pick up a mortgage that Habitat supplies. Now, what's interesting is that ha- that loan is at 0%. Mm. So every penny that they're paying goes to paying down their mortgage, which is something that's been a foundational principle for Habitat, and we have we very much adopt that. Um, we have um, training that they have to go through as part of their sweat equity process. Like financial management. Financial stuff. management, what is insurance, mm. things that many of our, many cases are homeowners. This is the first time they've ever owned a home in their entire family. Do they have like how to take care of your refrigerator, like maintenance They get classes? some maintenance training. Is there? Uh, awesome. Typically, it's more on the systems in the house. That too. You know, that <laughs> sort of thing. So uh, we've recently, uh, the homes that we're building right next to the Veterans Community Project all have solar power. Mm. And that's the first time we've ever done that uh, as part of our program. So we're very carefully monitoring with the city of Longmont the benefits of that. But how do I take care of a solar mm-hmm. system? We don't have natural gas going into those homes. So how do they handle the uh, electrical system uh, that's required uh, to heat and, air and cool the home right. uh, in the summers? Just maintenance so on it's, a home it's is all, something that's not taught. That's correct. And, and that and, I'm finding is a bummer <laughs> 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 because to take that, you know, to, to, to not know, you know, just that little bit of education that I know how to do that or what what issues to look for mm-hmm. to make sure that because that's a huge expense if your heater goes out oh. and it could have been something super simple that would right. have been easily well the systems that we're using now as an example um don't do the traditional way that the homes heat they're mm. a, they're a uh combined with the solar system um they are creating um, not so much more maintenance problems but different ways of setting the thermostat mm-hmm. and how do you do that and it's the heaters are not in the whole home like we might have where you've got one central air conditioning heating unit. In fact, they're controlled typically by the level of the floor mm. and that sort of thing. So there's there's some unique things that we're trying to do to make the homes, A, more energy efficient and B, long-term affordability is important to us, right? We, they've got a, a stable known mortgage payment. They're paying their property taxes. They're paying their insurance. But we want to try and keep the energy costs low. Uh, and hap- as it turns out, in the long run, we have very stable electrical rates compared to the rates of natural gas and everything mm. else. So energy efficiency has become more and more important to us uh, just as a philosophy. Um, we're also very keen on making our homes accessible. So if you look at our current development, we've got – um, two duplexes that are two-story, a three-bedroom and a four-bedroom. But we also have uh, two duplexes that are uh, single-story. So a family can age in place in that home. Mm-hmm. It can be uh, access, handicap accessible. Um, we've done certain things to make sure the doors are wide enough to accommodate a wheelchair. Those kinds of things are just critically important to the long-term stability uh, of, of our homes. Mm-hmm. And I think the most recent uh, statistics I put together of those 122 homes, 90% of them still have their original homeowner in them. Oh, wow. So, and I think the last number was 31 uh, homes have paid off their mortgages in full. Wow. So it's, it's a program that has a great deal of success. That stability can bring about a lot of 
benefits for the family. And the community itself. Oh, we think so. Just yes. to stay in a place yeah. instead of having to move every year or well, something. Our, uh, the assessed value of our homes uh, currently is $31 million in this, in this community. Wow. So it is creating economic stability for the family and economic benefit to our community. Yes, in many ways. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering that off-topic question. Yes, that's quite <laughs> I was just right. like, how does this work? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, um, what along the lines? So you, it's it's a it's a thirty to sixty, whatever you said percent or whatever. Um, uh, right, that, so the, so there's like a I'm I'm assuming there's an application fee or not a fee but a application process. Sure. Let's so talk about that, the application yeah, so process. Can, yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> so uh, a family, uh, we typically have uh, a call out both to our partners like the in-between and mm -hmm. um, the Center for People with Disabilities, things like that, to say, hey, we're about to start another selection process. We don't have a waiting list. We have an interest list. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are familiar with the idea of, well, I, I put, I'm on the waiting list and I'm number 227. So that's not how we work. Mm -hmm. Um, when you apply, we're looking basically for three things. We're looking at um, do you have a steady source of income, that sort of thing, because you're going to pick up a mortgage mm -hmm. that you're going to need to pay on. So we're looking for employment history. We're looking at uh, the range, the, the area we serve. Um, we look at then, so that's we call ability to pay. Would they be able to do this? Mm -hmm. Would they be able to afford the mortgage that they'll be, be picking up? And I can tell you that's probably one of the earliest areas that um, families need to fix and come up with. That, and we also look at their debt load. Mm -hmm. When we find we have folks that will counsel once that happens, that's a new program in particular that we're starting, not just for Habitat, but generally for people that are interested in, in obtaining housing. Mm. So um, we're looking at, is their debt load too great that they couldn't take on the, the price of a mortgage? Mm -hmm. And we've had folks that have applied with us three or four times, but they get better each time because they're working that debt down and, and not taking more on. Wonderful. Um, the, we look for their willingness to partner. Mm -hmm. So are they in fact uh, in a place where um, they can come and put those 250 to 500 hours of sweat equity if it's a single mom and things like that? Um, so that's an important part of that partnership with us that we explain that they have to go through these educational programs. All of those pieces are, are part and parcel with what we're looking for in terms of commitment of the family or individual to mm -hmm. be part of our program. Um, we're also looking at their current housing situation. So um, we have sometimes families that are doubled up or tripled up uh, in situations. They may be in an unsafe environment uh, where they're, let's, let's just pick one of a, a trailer that's dilapidated and not safe mm -hmm. from a fire perspective, right. that sort of thing. Or they're living in a basement with no egress windows mm. would be another example of an unsafe environment uh, that those are all factors in in the selection process um, and it's a it's a rigorous process they'll go through a pretty clear application that talks about you know they have to show what their financial situation is they have to get recommend letters of recommendation from their employer and things like that so we really are uh, looking for them to be successful. We don't want to put somebody in an unsuccessful position. Um, just as an example to that end, um, we have been fortunate to never have had a foreclosure mm. in our situation. The national foreclosure rate for Habitat is 1%. Wow. So <laughs> again, we're, we're looking for folks to be successful yeah. in the long term. And that's, that's very important to us that we're putting them in a better place for their family. So that's kind of the selection process. Um, they'll go through interviews with our family selection committee. Uh, and ultimately, um, we let them know if they're going to be selected. That's, a, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what are your greatest needs at Habitat for Humanity? 
first and foremost volunteers when I saw service was one of your key points. That was very important that I come and talk about that. <laughs> yes. That's another function that lands in my uh, particular well, area. We're building stronger communities. <laughs> yes. Well, that's good because, you know, we want to build strength, stability, and self-reliance in our families. That's, that's one of our key phrases that we tend to use with folks. And st that stability, being able to do that, mm. uh, comes because volunteers are part of that process all along the way, whether they're serving on the job site for a day and you, you've been out there, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not like we're going to ask you to do anything that's, you know, you need any special training for. No, you guys have that taken care of. <laughs> yes. We, it's we, not just thrown together by, you know, yeah, that's your, right. your neighbors. It's, it's okay, you can, you can paint, you can do the things that don't require super skills, but then the things that require skills and those certifications, plumbing, electrical, you guys have... You we guys have, have professionals, that covered. You yes. Have, and those are those volunteers also? Do they partner? In is some it kind cases, of a mixture? it's a mixture. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, we when we started out, it was all volunteers, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, Habitat had these little house plans that you could use and follow and everything else. Uh, today, we're very fortunate. We have uh, several volunteer architects in town mm -hmm. that help design our homes and help them fit in nicely with the community. Uh, they understand the the essence, if you will, of making the house affordable to build. Yes. Uh, and not having complex things that are very, very difficult right. to, to achieve. But our volunteers really um, make it happen because we have folks uh, uh, that come in and have never used a power saw before. And it's like, oh, what I, you know, I'm scared <laughs> of that. And... Um, one of my favorite stories to tell about that is um, during the floods, we were uh, fortunate to have the governor and, and one of our state senators come and visit us mm. uh, the, a year after the flood. And we had a group of women uh, preparing one of our foundations for um, the home that would be built on top of that foundation. And the, go the governor came over and said, what are you guys doing? And they were leveling the thing so that the house would be square and straight and everything. He was just fascinated that this <laughs> group of five women led by one of our women volunteer nice. uh, leaders mm -hmm. uh, was doing this pretty complex task mm -hmm. that they learned in a day. Yeah. So it is, it's something that I always want to encourage people. Don't think you have to have a special skill. Bring um, the folks from your church. Bring the folks from your business. Bring your women's sharing group or men's sharing group to come and really be a part of uh, this incredible process mm -hmm. of building community and, and doing those things. I like that, building community, because yep. they're building with the people that are there with the same goal in mind. Absolutely. And you make memories and... Even within your even within your group, you you're connecting in a different level than what you're like normally doing. Oh, so it's exactly. good to get out of the box and see, you know, where where your gifts are and stuff too. And, sure. and hey, we enjoyed this, or oh, we didn't enjoy this, but hey, we still had a lot of fun. Well, you that's know? it. And you know, sometimes your gift is showing up, mm -hmm. and you need people to carry the boards as much as you yep. do to do the framing, to do those things. Picking but up we, all the nails. Yes, we and we <laughs> yes, all the nails. All the nails. Uh, so you get your little magnet and you go out there and you can just walk around and pick up nails. That's right. And that's fantastic. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there is, is seriously where we pride ourselves on having a great construction team mm -hmm. uh, that understands how to train volunteers and how to get them active and doing valuable things. Yeah. And they there. had patience and that was very nice yes. because they, you know, they show you and then they kind of watch you for a little bit to make sure you understand what you're doing yep. before they leave you alone. And Absolutely. so that was good. So that way they don't have to go back and redo it or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure that you're, you're, you're putting your, putting your, your heart into it. Mm -hmm. Do you have requirements for volunteers? R sure. Um, to volunteer on the job site, uh, if you're 16 to 18 year old, you need to be there with a parent, mm -hmm. uh, typically. Uh, and there's certain things you can't do, like can't have you using power tools and stuff. But Driving you can around. help with, yeah, that's <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, but there are volunteer opportunities at our restore as well. Mm. We haven't talked about that very much. Let's but, talk about restore. Okay. I love the restore. So, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so um, that is a place where we can use younger volunteers, okay. about 14 and up uh, for that. Uh, Restore is another funding source for us um, in terms of helping us to build houses. And we, uh, again, people can donate um, gently used goods there, uh, primarily uh if you go in, we don't do clothing, we don't do televisions, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But we do have great appliances, mm -hmm. uh, great furniture that folks have, have donated to us. We turn around and sell those, uh, typically about a third of the market uh, value of whatever we, we see. We have leftover. I've seen flooring oh, there. I've flooring. seen paint. Yes, we're we're kind of Home Depot meets Goodwill. You know, we're <laughs> we're <you> we're <laughs> um, very blessed to have some some great things in the store, and it changes all the time. All the time. We do have an online store mm. that you should be aware of. Uh, so again, you can get to that by going to our website and uh, looking up Restore. And uh, that'll take you to that and all the things that are uh, requirements for donating. But that's also a great place to volunteer because mm. our families do also volunteer in there. Especially um, we had uh, one family that just went in uh, whose uh, – the daughter is confined to a wheelchair. And so uh, they just – as a matter of fact, we just dedicated their home. Mm. And that was where they did a lot of their service was working in our restore. So – uh, again, we, we are very flexible in terms of how you work with Habitat to, to make your volunteer hours, but that's a great place for kids to volunteer too if they've got Wonderful. their things they have to do for school requirements for volunteering. And as they get older, we'd love to have them on the job site too. That's great. I like that. I think a, a second thing that we uh, do is try to tell people about our program and to advocate for the need of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I mean – Frankly, it is the biggest problem we have all along the Front Range as well as in our mountain communities. Mm. Uh, that uh, ability to say, look, I understand there's so many misconceptions about people that don't have the kind of housing that many of us are you know, granted, blessed to have. Mm -hmm. And um, – these are the, the – frankly, the working poor in our community. These are folks that you're going to run into doing the stocking at the grocery store. You're going to run into them being uh, the CNA that's taking care of your grandparents. Mm -hmm. These are the folks that are make our communities home. run, yeah. quite frankly. So it's, it's very important that we advocate for affordable housing at all levels mm -hmm. uh, because – there are needs of the homeless. Well, these folks are at the other end of the spectrum. They're ready for home ownership. They're trained how to take care of it. Recently, we've been in several – building in several communities where they have home ownership or uh, homeowners associations. So that's something we're training our people in now. How do you participate in that home yeah. ownership? How do you do that? Um, what One of the things I'm particularly proud about recently is uh, – Two of our homeowners have been elected to uh, positions in city uh, – well, one is in the city council in Decono and one is on the school board up in Estes Park. Oh, nice. So that's something that's, that's – They're taking that community they, to heart. <laughs> that's right. They're becoming a bigger and bigger part of their community and that's what's so important mm -hmm. to us is that really makes a difference. I think the other thing that we need to understand um, about – our folks that enter into this program is I mentioned that roughly 90% of our homes are still occupied by their original folks. That stability that we give their children so they're not moving every couple of years. Well, and the knowledge that's passed on. Absolutely. That, that family, you've started a complete different mm -hmm. <laughs> segment One. for their kids to go on and teach their kids. Absolutely. And, um, that's, that's, that's invaluable. And I think it's something that we've we've taken to heart. We have one of our family members uh, is now on a full ride scholarship to Duke. Mm. We because she had a stable environment. Mm -hmm. She had a place where she could grow and learn and thrive. We see that in health outcomes too, mm -hmm. because now we're not. They're not in an unsafe environment. They're not in an health, unhealthy environment. Um, those are the kinds of things that are outcomes of having stable housing, of having affordable housing. 
Um, as simple as it is. Sim as simple as it sounds, mm -hmm. it's something that we really take for granted. And so for us to have that, it has huge effects on the children in terms of their educational achievement. They're with the same kids all the way through you know, uh, middle school and high school, those sorts of things. The other one that's, that is not as apparent sometimes is that um, that stability allows our individuals to progress too. Mm. An example would be we uh, built a home, I'm going to guess 10 years ago now, for um, a woman who was a LPN. I'm sorry, she was a CNA when she started. She went, because she had that stability and the known fixed thing, she was able to go and get her LPN and ultimately her RN. Mm. And she still serves in this community as a, as a nurse. Yeah. That's the kind of power uh, that these sort of things have. You mentioned about um, demonstrating for kids. One of the very first families we served was a family with nine children. Hmm. Uh, and every, uh, the, the family went through the program. And today, all nine of those children are traditional homeowners. Wow. The family, st the mom and dad are still in the home, empty nesters now. <laughs> but all nine of those children had that example to say, this is what I want for my they family. They know how to do it. And <laughs> they're not Habitat homeowners. Mm -mm. They're traditional wow. folks that were able to get mortgages because of that. Um, three of them have become teachers in our community as well. So th that's, that's the power of having stable home ownership for families that can change their lives. Absolutely. And the, and the future of the community and the future in general. That's correct. That's amazing. Absolutely. Oh, wow. I never thought, I didn't, I didn't think it was that, that deep, but that foundation is a foundation Absolutely. for generations. That's right. So it's, it's something that, um, a lot of people don't appreciate. Mm -hmm. I guess the third thing you, you were asking me about, you know, what do we need mm -hmm. is obviously we need donors to mm -hmm. make this happen. What I love to tell folks is the dollar that you give us today is going to be invested in a home mm -hmm. that's going to start paying a mortgage to Habitat. That mortgage dollar will be reinvested to build more homes. So it it's an investment. That, that dollar that mm -hmm. you're giving is regenerating for years. Yeah. Um, the, the things that are important to our families. So we love to say we give a hand up, not a handout. And that example has was started at Koyania Farms and continues today. Fantastic. Wow, that's really cool. Um, do you have any events coming up or volunteer opportunities? Uh, we've, we've started 12 new homes. We'll have lots <laughs> of volunteer opportunities. Um, you know Colorado weather. If mm. it, we we build no matter what, mm -hmm. um, we'll be putting in, uh, let's see, a total of eight of those 12 homes. We'll be putting foundations for those in the ground um, in January. So we'll start going vertical, as the construction guys say. <laughs> um, and that will... Um, that will be when we start to need volunteers, a serious number of volunteers. And by the summer, we'll have eight of those homes that'll be all in various stages of construction. So we'll need lots of people uh, to come help our families build those homes. Mm -hmm. And again, we're, we're set up uh, so that we can um, essentially um, take groups, take individuals, we have a group we call the regulars. So if they're folks that are, you know, in retirement or men and women mm -hmm. um, that regularly join us, uh, I think their day is typically Wednesday, they come out. But we'll take volunteers. We typically have volunteers on site Wednesday through Saturday. And um, we can accommodate groups. If you have a out of town group, so let's say your um, church has a partnership with another church someplace. We actually just built a volunteer center hmm. in the basement of our building that we can accommodate up to, I want to say, 15 people uh, and for a week to eight weeks. Uh, so we bring in groups like AmeriCorps who have regular things. We bring in uh, collegiate challenge groups 
uh, who are kids on an alternative spring break, and uh, we can accommodate them uh, in our facility to be able to volunteer with us for a longer period of time. Oh, wow. So that's been a major... So it's like a, like a dorm setting? Is that kind yeah, of what you're talking we've about? We've got two bunk rooms. So oh, right on. We've got two bathrooms down there with showers so they can clean up afterwards. We have washing machines so they can do their clothes and a full kitchen. Oh, wow. So it's, and just spend a week and You can spend a week and serve. That's fantastic. And uh, we like that. We're kind of trying to work with other folks to let them know about that. So that's a new thing for us. We just actually finished our big fundraiser of the year, which was our gift of home tour. Mm -hmm. And we are always looking for sponsors for that. But uh, that that event entails um, essentially us uh, working with some uh, decorators and such to decorate four homes in the community. And uh, we're always looking for new homes, especially historic homes that want to be part of this. Uh, show off their place. The decorators uh, will come and decorate the home for Christmas. They can buy things from those decorators, that sort of thing. And the ticket price uh, goes to us and sponsorship dollars go to us to help put the event on. Nice. So it's a fun, that's our biggest fundraiser at this point in time. I've been sharing that gift of home. Good. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> there was like hot chocolate like sponsor candy cane or something. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I was, I was like, oh, well, it's fun. very Christmassy. So, One of the yeah. folks that works for me does that and <laughs> has done a great job with it. So, and we really appreciate our decorators uh, that, that put in a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, and effort to make those. Uh, it's just been a, a really good thing. It's been in the community for over 55 years now. Wow. So we just recently got it and we think it really matches well with our mission of affordable home ownership. We also always try to uh, have a uh, habitat home in there so people can see what's a habitat home look like if they've it's never a, been involved. It's a house. Yeah, it's a it house. It looks it's, like a house. And it's beautiful. <laughs> so That you can live in. <laughs> yep, for sure. It's probably, you know, I think maybe people, yeah, it, it doesn't look like it's just manufactured and put together. Absolutely and not. It's an actual, you know, it's... No, it's, they're, you know, we're... Um, in the process right now of working through, right now we're doing uh, this next project will be duplex homes, as mm -hmm. I say, but in a duplex home community. We've got another project we're working on that hopefully will be 30 um, single family homes. Oh, wow. Because that's what the neighborhood is about. So not, it's not cookie cutter houses? Absolutely not. Kentucky houses that's why we, stacked up. That's why we have <laughs> architects that, that's that, fantastic. Uh, that are part of our, our process because we really want that home to be that family's home. Pride. Yes. Well, I think that's the thing. If we have pride and ownership of our homes, our families have exactly that same pride, yeah. that same desire to have a community that's beautiful, that's a great place for kids. Those are that all part of the same desire. Yeah. Uh, and, and for some reason, that's why advocacy is important for us. We want our volunteers to meet our families. Yeah. We want them to see they're no different. They have the same desires as every one of ours. Yeah. Wow, that's that's really touching. Thanks. <laughs> I really like it a lot. <laughs> um, I was talking before about um, going in, um, helping spruce up people's yards or paint their fences or whatever. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about that program? Sure. Um, right now, uh, our critical repair program really is focused on the Glens neighborhood in Dakono. Okay. And so uh, that's a program that's a part of our bigger neighborhood revitalization program. Uh, we have uh, been blessed to be a testing bed for many concepts on neighborhood revitalization for habitat oh, overall. Okay. So <clears throat> we do have, uh, we currently just do repairs in this particular community and um, we've been able to obtain funding from several sources so that the homeowner in this case pays 10% of the cost of the repair and then we bring our staff and volunteers in mm -hmm. to help um, fix those homes up. That started out with a program called the Brush with Kindness. We don't do too many of those anymore, but um, the fact of the matter is there's such a need for repairs. Mm -hmm. We're looking about the best ways to expand that program to other parts of our service area. But at this point in time, we're really um, focused down in the glens, um, 
but we'll see where that goes. Awesome. And see where what happens with it. Well, that's good. Well, that's, that's fun to have um, that. That's expanding. That that's that you're you're testing out new things and figuring out ways to help in different ways. Well, and that's I think what's what's interesting about that is when people move into a home. The reasons the Glens was chosen is it's largely a manufactured mm-hmm. home area, mm-hmm. and so those trailers sort of have a shelf life. And what we're doing now is uh, we're able to go in uh, in that program and uh, make them handicapped accessible, put wider doors in, build a ramp for somebody so they can age in place. Mm -hmm. Uh, The folks that live in the Glens love that community, love being there. Um, But I can't tell you the number of floors we've replaced in homes that have just worn down over the years of being there. Um, Where a bathtub might have worked before, now we'll rebuild a shower and do the plumbing work to to make it so that it can be uh, accessible in a walker or a wheelchair. That's that's, uh, an important uh, thing that we've learned a lot about uh, in the last five years that we've been doing that program down there. And we hope we can find a way to extend it to other communities that we serve. But it's more people served. It's keeping people in their home. Mm-hmm. That's the important part of, of our critical repair program. And safely. And safely, yes. And sustainably. Yes, I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So how can people um, contact and find out more about um, Habitat for Humanity? Of course, I'll share everything. Sure. Be in my QR code. I'll put it up, everything in the description. But mm-hmm. go ahead and just so several ways. It. Um, we obviously have a website, mm-hmm. and so that's uh, SaintBrainHabitat.org. All one word: SaintBrainHabitat.org. Um, if you come out and volunteer, you can go to that website first of all, and uh, volunteer. We have a little button that says "I'd like to volunteer." Boop! It'll take you to our volunteer page. Uh, you can sign up online. Uh, we'll communicate with you. Um, do we have a release that you sign that says, hey, we can take your picture if you're working that day? But more importantly, you know, the liability waivers and all that kind of stuff yeah. uh, that we have. Um, the uh, other way is to call our office. We, I have a volunteer uh, coordinator whose job it is to make sure we get people and groups and stuff in. And you can do that by calling 303-682-2485, and you'll be prompted for what you want to do, and uh, that'll get you to the right folks to, to get you signed up. And you guys have Facebook and Instagram. We have Facebook. All those we fun have Instagram. Things. All the all the things. <laughs> um, but the uh, the website serves as our main volunteer portal, awesome. uh, if you will. Awesome. Um, that's, that's all fantastic. Um, you say groups come in. Um, do you, is it just, they just come in and they, or do you have like a, a program that like facilitates like group building or? Absolutely. Do you know what Te- I'm talking about? Yep. Team building kinds team building, of programs. Yeah. So uh, a lot of our corporate partners here in town uh, bring out teams every year. Some of them bring out two or three teams every year, uh, which we're thrilled at about. Um We don't um, charge you to volunteer at all, uh, but we do have a program that's called an Adopt-A-Day. So we know we spend about $2,500 every day in terms of materials and stuff to build a home. That's not labor hours. No. It's just material. That's just material. Got it. So it is – that's one of the ways that a corporation or a church can help us is to adopt a day. They they pay for the materials that will be used that day. And uh, that's that's something that uh, is very easy to do. Um, we start every morning with a safety talk, mm-hmm. so you learn. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing today, and things like don't fall in the holes. Don't fall in the holes. <laughs> don't back. Don't walk backwards mm-hmm. on a construction site because mm-hmm. you're bound to trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, um, and that starts the morning. We then do. Um, break into teams and you'll learn individual safety things. So if you're using a chop saw, you know, you'll get instruction from one of our volunteers or one of our staff on how to use that safely, how to do the work, how to measure things so that you're not cutting multiple things multiple times. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, then you're off and running on whatever task you've you've been assigned or volunteered for, uh, for that. We take a lunch break. Uh, 
if it's a team build, part of the benefit of a team build is both you get T-shirts and you get lunch. So that's incentive. <laughs> um, but um, then during that time, we actually run through a thing called we, we call Habitat 101, which shares with you what is our program about, some of the things we've talked about here, we talk about in greater detail uh, during the lunch hour. Mm. Then we'll get back to work, and usually we're wrapping up by 3 30, 4 o'clock. So that's uh, kind of what our work day looks like. Right now, we're starting at 9 o'clock because it's a little cold and mm -hmm. dark at 8. <laughs> but um, during the summer, we'll go 8 to 3, 4 o'clock. And then in the winter, more like 9 to, to 3, 3 30. Awesome. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add to the conversation maybe that I've missed or you just feel that you have a passion to talk about mm. for a little bit? Well, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I've weaved in some stories that, mm. that we have about our stories families. Stories make the whole thing. It's, <laughs> it, it's what, you know, I as a development guy, you know, people say, oh, it must be awful raising money. No, it's I really look at it as, as part of the purpose in my life. Mm. You know, I spent – geez, 30 years or so in the, in the corporate world and began volunteering for Habitat back then. Um, but I really, you know, the thing I enjoy about this is it's really a purposeful life. It's something that uh, I get to share the good news about what's happening in our community. Mm -hmm. And whether that's here in Longmont, up in Estes Park, out in the, the Carbon Valley area, mm -hmm. Habitat's doing tremendous work in our community and we've been blessed with resources but um, as i've heard one of the pastors say thank you lord for what you've given us it's not enough we have more to do mm -hmm. and that's something i really take to heart um, we're blessed to be part of this community we have been for 35 years um, so for us it's really a way that we can serve serve people of all faiths and all beliefs. Um, so for us, it is critically important that we do that service well. And whether that be with folks that volunteer with us for a day or become part of our regulars, whether it's somebody that gives us $25 a year or $10,000 a year, those are folks that make the difference uh, for our families. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I think I could say as a person who's been in this role for 10 years, um, those, those dollar investments that people um, make change lives and change them on a permanent basis and, and change for them for generations to, to come. come. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, John, for coming on the show. Well, my pleasure, I'm and thanks to, for the invitation. Absolutely. I'm glad to track you guys down because um, <laughs> I did the Veterans Community Project was my very first episode. Ah. And so then when I went and did um, help them on their build day, I, might, I met maybe you or somebody um, all, while we were there, and I couldn't track you down. But um, I'm so glad that we were able to connect well, and, and get this taken care of now. Well, it, it's great. And I'd say, you know, we're – we're happy to partner with many folks in the community, and it just uh, it makes such a difference. And doing the right thing, come out and build with us next time <laughs> yeah, as we get yeah, started no, next. For sure. so. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. That'll be awesome. Cool. Thank you, John, for yeah. um, talking to us about Habitat for Humanity, and um, hopefully you guys get some more – get some more volunteers, you guys. Yes. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It, it really is. And you get to learn learn different skills and that can you can – use in your life in your home set mm -hmm. too so if you're struggling with something like volunteer and come learn about it that's a great, great way to hands-on do that that's so. absolutely true all right thank you john i appreciate you coming thank you on. for having michelle appreciate it yeah <laughs> thank you to my guests my listeners and my supporters serving together we can strengthen our community please like and subscribe do all those other things you know you got to do them because that's the easiest way to, that you can serve right now. All right, now go. Connect with others and be a blessing. <laughs>